and, and to provide. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Chair. Um, uh, the Honourable Damien O'Connor. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. And, and uh, I, I came down to the House not intending to speak on the bill, but I had been listening in my office and, and um, thought that if the opportunity arose, I'd just ask a few questions. We're on part three of the bill. And I, I was kind of somewhat surprised um, just listening in my office to this bill um, because it seemed that it, it is um, a bill, quite a complex bill, and, and from a government that has stood on a mandate and promises, empty as they may be, of reducing compliance and reducing regulations, this is a bizarre piece of legislation. And anyone who reads through this, and the farmers, in fact, um, the Minister of Agriculture there, Mr David Carter, the farmers there will be absolutely flabbergasted to read this bill. And there might be some there watching TV, there may be some there on the internet, and they may even, in fact, they won't be able to download it because it's quite thick and they won't have broadband that's capable of it. But anyway, the farmers who were told that this government would come in and reduce compliance costs will be shocked. And, and I'm just picking up part three here. And that road user charge collector may issue assessment for unpaid road user charge if the collector forms the opinion obviously somewhat subjective, and I have to say that further on down here in 48.2, there are, of course, qualifications to form the opinion. But nonetheless, you've handed to an individual, I guess, a power that is, is um, quite significant and, and, and um, we hope never abused, but it's an ability to step in here and make assessments and there will be many farmers, I'd suggest, Mr Carter, who up and down the country are running um, trucks, three tonners, five tonners, bigger ones perhaps. Um, they use them from time to time. On occasions they may forget that the road user charges they have purchased have, have actually expired or they've gone a few kilometres or and they are in the middle of the harvest season. And for some reason they haven't been able to get to the post office. Maybe there's not a agency close by that is open. So they may be forced to or inadvertently um, go over their road user charges. And, and the penalties in here are quite harsh. Let's be quite honest about this. And this piece of complex legislation here, designed, we are told, and, and we're certainly supporting it on the basis of, of streamlining the system, is nonetheless a whole lot of regulation and bureaucracy and compliance cost. And while we were criticised as a government for being the nanny state, imposing unnecessary costs on industry, this government is no better. Let's get that on the record. No better at all because the reality is that we do need some regulations. We do need to have some guidance um, through legislation. And the the double standards, I guess. There's an H word I'm not allowed to use. The, the, yes, I am allowed to use it, uh, Mr Chairman. The hypocrisy of the situation. The hypocrisy is that, that a government that claims it would do no more in terms of regulation and compliance costs is having to do exactly the same things that the Labor government had to do when we were in office and were unfairly criticised for. The difference that we in opposition, where we understand the need for sensible regulation and guidance and sound legislation, we will support the government from time to time. This is one of these occasions, but let's not kid ourselves that this will impose greater compliance costs, greater obligations, a higher level of scrutiny on anyone using a heavy vehicle through this country. And the government will say that is necessary. When we were in office, of course, they said it was unnecessary. And I can see all the members over there shaking their heads. Well, they should be anyway, because they understand that. But here we have, as I say, a piece of legislation considered by the Select Committee, altered and improved drastically to ensure that we do have a fair system of road user charges that, that heavier vehicles pay more. And I understand that some will pay considerably more um, and, and that for them will be an additional cost on their business, um, brought in by the national government, the national government, 
is imposing greater costs on business. That is the reality of the situation that this piece of legislation will lead to. Let's not kid ourselves otherwise. Uh, Question be now put. The yes, question is that the question be now put. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. no. The ayes have it. No. Party votes called for. Ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National. 57 in favour. New Zealand Labour. 42 against. Green Party. Nine opposed. Act New Zealand. Five in favour. Māori Party. Progressive. One opposed. United Future. One in favour. Mana. One opposed. Members, the ayes are 63, the noes are 56. The question will be put. We have first the Minister's amendments as set out on SOP number 287. The question is that the Minister's amendments be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that part three is amended, stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Members, we now move to debate on part four. The question is that part four clauses 67B to 89 and schedules two and three stand part. Uh, uh, the Honourable